You're in your simulator flying along and the flight's going very well. And suddenly, for no apparent reason, one of your peripherals suddenly shuts down. Maybe your yoke, throttle quadrant, or maybe even your rudder pedals. You unplug it, plug it back in. Sometimes you get that peripheral back and sometimes you don't. And that just ruins the flight. Well, in this video, I'm going to look at one of the things that you can do to check to try and resolve this problem. I can't promise it'll fix all the problems, but it should be on your troubleshooting list. So let's jump to the computer and have a quick look. Welcome to the Stim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching and let's get started. From your taskbar, choose the search icon and then type in Control Panel and the Control Panel app will appear. Click on that. When the Control Panel is open, what we're looking for is Device Manager, not Devices and Printers. Choose Device Manager. This will open a separate window. And the category we're interested in is Universal Serial Bus Controllers, not Devices. Universal Serial Bus Controllers. Click on the arrow to open it up and it will indicate all the USB connectors to your computer. In my case, I've got quite a lot of USB devices because I've got three powered hubs connected as well. What we're interested in here is anything that's got the description USB hub or host controller or root hub. We're not really concerned with anything labeled device. Choosing my top USB hub, I right click and from the drop down menu, I'm going to choose properties. And from the properties menu, we see there's a number of tabs. General, Driver, Details, Events and Power Management. It's Power Management we're interested in. Under the Power Management tab, we see there is Allow the Computer to Turn Off This Device to Save Power option. If it's ticked, then this option is enabled. If it's not ticked, then it is disabled. What this means is the computer can turn off that USB port if it needs to save or conserve power. There is a finite amount of power draw allocated to the USBs on your system. As you plug in more USB devices, that amount of power has to be distributed across the active ports. If the power draw is in excess of the amount allocated to the USB ports, well, then the computer is going to switch a port off. And it turns off the port, then anything connected to that port will, in effect, be disconnected. So, for example, something like your rudder pedals will draw very little power. But that's not the case, maybe, with a VR headset, or perhaps even the Bravo throttle quadrant and so on. These are much heavier and more demanding on your system. The Windows default setting is the boxes are ticked. And it's worth rechecking these settings from time to time, especially after a major Windows update. Windows doesn't always turn the ports off, of course, but it can happen and it's something worth checking. So I'm now going to untick this and let's go and check another one. I'm going to choose the second one in the list. Using the right mouse button, I'm going to access the Properties and then the Power Management tab. And I'm going to uncheck the box and then I'm going to choose OK. And so now we can go and check all the various ones labeled Hub, or root hub or host controller. Let's check one of those quickly. Note, not all host controllers have a power management option. If we click on the composite device, for example, we'll see there's no power management tab, so we don't have to worry about that. I personally go through all options from time to time and make sure none of the power management options are enabled. Another source for potential problems may be that we're connecting a device through the wrong USB port. Although not a standard convention, most ports are colored to allow for easier identification. This is generally complied with, but not universally so, so some caution is required. USB 3 ports are colored blue and are backwards compatible to USB 2 and USB 1. You should note, however, if it's a USB 3 connector required and you connect it to a USB 2 port, it may work, but problems could be encountered. A typical example of this is the more modern VR headsets require a USB 3 port. A USB 2 port just doesn't allow for enough data to be transferred fast enough to the headset. And the result? Well, it's poor performance. 
A better way to identify what ports you've got is by the insignia or label, as indicated above, and there you can see the considerable difference in the amount of data various ports can transmit. Unlike the various color combinations used for ports, this labeling is an industry standard. If you're like me and a flight sim enthusiast, then you've probably got a whole lot of different peripherals attached to your system. To ensure I get enough power to my USB devices, I use separate powered hubs. By powered, I mean that the US hub has its own power source, so it's not reliant on the computer for the power feed to the respective ports. As mentioned earlier, I have three four-port hubs attached to my system. My personal preference is to get hubs with only four or five ports on them. My concern being if you buy a hub with, say, 12 ports on, well, you can have limited power to the, each of those respective ports. Again, my preference is to have powered hubs that I can turn on and off individually, so I only power on those USB hubs that I'm currently using. If you can, connect your powered hubs to USB 3 ports to facilitate more data transfer. And also please note, plugging in a USB 3 powered hub into a USB 2 port does not give you USB 3 functionality. Your data transfer rate is determined by the port on the computer. The reality is most of my peripherals are actually connected into powered hubs rather than directly into the computer. That's it for today, just a very quick video, and I hope it's going to be of some help to some of you. Well, I hope this information has been useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourselves, and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye for now.